Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing my TBR for the Readathon Springathon. So this is a readathon that I am co-hosting with the wonderful Natalie, Heidi and Doris as well as Juliana on Instagram and all their accounts will be linked down below. It's a nature writing non-fiction readathon but you can read fiction throughout it as well. And we've got eight different prompts for the two week readathon that I've got some different books that I want to kind of pair up for my TBR here and then I'm also going to be talking about the four fiction books that I just kind of want to read generally that are nature inspired. If you've no idea what I'm on about I'll link the announcement video down below as well and I do have some recommendations videos that will be out already so please do check them out if you're looking for inspiration. So let's talk about what I'm going to read for each one of the prompts. So our prompts are actually like pairs of words combined together that you can interpret in any way that you want and if you want to you can just try and read like one from each side of the pair or you can try and do all eight like I do have a book for all eight of them. Uh, this is a very ambitious TBR that I'm fully expecting to spill over into the majority of May in general to be honest. I'm going to see just what I can get through in the official two weeks of Springathon but then I'm just going to probably keep going for the rest of May and let Springathon take over the entire month. So the first prompt is migration and for that I have the On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. This is the iconic text where Darwin put forward his theory of evolution and completely rocked the world of science. Now I thought this was quite fitting for migration because Darwin came to most of his ideas due to the travels that he did on the ship the Beagle um, so that kind of migration as such sort of around the world exploring and seeing all the various different things that helped him to sort of form this idea of early evolution kind of thing. Um, it's also on my classics TBR and I figured it was about time that I check out this absolute giant of a science book. I really enjoy classic non-fiction, I think it's very interesting so I figured this would be a good place to start and the cover for this one is absolutely fantastic. The paired prompt with migration is home and for that I have Sea Room by Adam Nicholson. This is the story of one man, three islands and half a million puffins. Adam Nicholson inherited a collection of islands off the coast of the UK when he was only 21 due to a death in the family and it is about his story kind of coming to these islands seeing what they're like, his kind of experiences on them. I'm getting a very like Waterfalls of Stars vibe from this book which was a firm favourite from Springathon last year for me so I'm hoping that it's going to be a similar kind of experience when it comes to sort of capturing the magic of this totally isolated experience living on an island and um, yeah I thought it was fitting for home because I believe Adam Nicholson does spend some time like actually living on the islands and making them his home so I thought that that was a fairly fitting uh connection between the two. The next pairing that we have is Bloom and Decay and for Bloom I have of course The Secret Life of Trees by Colin Tudge. Bloom really is angling towards more of a plant-based reading experience. Obviously interpret it in any way that you want but I figured that this was a, a go-to one that I should definitely try and read. I think it might have been on my Springathon TBR last year and I didn't get to it so it is all about the secret life of trees, plants, how they live, why they matter etc etc. I'm quite keen on paleo, paleo botany um, and sort of like the history of trees and when they first evolved um, so I'm hoping that this will cover some of that and then also just go into more detail in general and it's gonna be nice to have some I've got a couple of like really classic-y classic more like science-y rather than nature memoir books and this is one of them so it's definitely a preferred reading for me. The uh, other side of Bloom is Decay and of course this one is perfectly fitted in with anything to do with fungi and mushrooms so for that I'm gonna be reading Entangled Life by Merlin Shell Drake I believe. This is actually one of the book club picks for May for the book club book Naturalists which Heidi and Doris who are our co-hosts um, are also um, they organize that so it's not the official Springathon group book that is coming up soon but they are reading that one in May and it is all about mushrooms and fungi and what they are and kind of what they end up doing for our planet because fungus is really weird it does not fit in naturally with kind of plants or animals in terms of like from a scientific perspective it's very strange how it interacts and how it kind of defies death and how important it is in our like life cycle of the planet in terms of dealing with decomposing things and it's something that I know very little about so I'm really psyched this year to try and read a bit more about mushrooms because they are weird and I'm very keen for it. The next prompt is forage slash hibernate and for forage I have braiding sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kilmera. This is indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge and the teachings of plants and I thought this was good because it's all about kind of foraging from the land and kind of the lessons that you can learn and it's a combination of um, Robin's Native American background and sort of history and sort of mythology, folklore connected with her upbringing and her culture there as well as alongside it her understanding of various kind of scientific um, 
advancements about plants as she's sort of coming to it from two different directions. I've heard only good things. This was a hugely popular pick for Springathon last year that I ended up buying because so many people had it on their TBRs. I've heard only good things and actually um, Robin has another book about moss that one of my mates Harry absolutely loves so I thought it was about time that I read it. I've got it on audiobook and I think that's gonna be really good. And then it wouldn't be one of my TBRs if we didn't have something to do with paleontology so for Hibernate we have a book on fossils specifically trilobites. Uh, so this is by Richard Forte and it's trilobite eyewitness to evolution and trilobites were alive on our planet pre-dinosaurs. I think they're in the Cambrian area I could be wrong about that I'm a little bit shaky with names and timelines but trilobites were a sort of leading life form on our planet for quite a long period of time and there were thousands of different kinds they're very very cool they look like pokemon um and yeah basically i want to know more about them so i bought this book last year i still haven't got to it yet which is crazy oh embroidery is falling over behind me that's fine and uh yeah i think it's gonna be good fun and the idea is that the uh the fossils have been hibernating under the ground ready for us to, to discover so that's kind of how i'm working in to the link this is a very respectful tbr from me in terms of variety because there is only this one in terms of for paleontology books I was I've been very controlled and actually reading more from the kind of classic conventional idea of nature writing and not just natural history so I'm very impressed with myself for branching out even more um, so yeah so trilobite is going to be my paleontology pick and then the final pairing is buzz and silence or stillness stillness not silence stillness apologies and for buzz i am picking the buzzed up super hyped book that is the group book for springathon and that is the way through the woods overcoming grief through nature by long lit wound long lit wound this is about her experiences after her husband died um, and she ended up getting really into foraging and into sort of mushrooms and um sort of collecting things from the woods and it's about what she learned and sort of the also process of going through grief like i said it is the group pick it is also um, a pick for the book naturalist book club um, for May as well so this is the one that if you do want to join in with the group read this is what it is going to be um, I don't know if the book naturalists do anything group read wise in terms of like videos or live streams or anything so you'll need to check out either Doris or Heidi's channels to find out more about that we are currently not planning on doing anything live streamy um, because we are a more relaxed readathon than that so it's just gonna be a case of like there's no discussion group at the moment I don't think but feel free to check out any of the other co-hosts to see if they are doing anything a little bit more involved about this if you are reading this book with us but I am intrigued um, and yeah it's gonna be fun to read yet more about mushrooms we're going a bit more mushroom heavy this year and then the final pick I have is uh, for stillness and this is feral rewilding the land sea and human life by George Monbiot and rewilding is a particular um, sort of theory in conservation and kind of environmental sciences this idea of a giving back to the land and kind of a stepping back from humanity to allow um, creatures to be reintroduced and you sort of you, you reintroduce a few keystone species and then you get sort of the diversity and um, the sort of blossoming of the ecosystems that you're looking for that then also has knock-on effects that are really good for um, various environmental causes. Now I first came across this concept with Wilding by Isabella Tree that I read in January last year that for me was one of the kind of first books of nature writing that sort of kicked off this love for it and was sort of the the origin story of me wanting to read more in this area and I've had this book on my shelf for ages so I've got the audio book and I think it's time to go for it. Apparently it is more sciencey and more generally about um, rewilding as a like theory um, than wilding by Isabella Tree which is a lot more of a personal experience of her and the farm that she owned with her husband. Uh, but the idea for me for the prompt was the land has been made still and this is about life coming back to it and invading that stillness and kind of reinvigorating it as it's sort of um, dead or very choked up with only one or two species. So yeah that counts that's totally uh, <laughs> that that's a way of interpreting that prompt. So I'm very intrigued by this one. Re the concept of rewilding can be quite controversial in environmental circles so I think this will be really interesting to find out more about the controversy as well. So those are the eight non-fiction books that I intend to read in Springathon and probably Drifting Beyond but I don't just want to read uh, non-fiction throughout the month because that doesn't really give me wiggle room for when work really kicks off and gets a bit manic which it does from time to time so I have four uh, fiction books that I want to try and get to at some point in the month as well. The first one is Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. This is a funky horror book which is told from the point of view of a crow. It is a um, partially tamed pet crow that then um, 
the humanity experiences a zombie apocalypse and the story is told from the crow's point of view finding out that his like owner has been turned into a zombie and then kind of goes off in his own little travels and sort of finds out some stuff i've heard good things apparently it's really fun and i think it'll be a really lovely light-hearted mix but i've tried to keep sort of a nature focus in the fiction books that i'm reading so that they do still kind of vaguely fit in with springathon so i thought this would be fun as it is told from the point of view of a bird another book that's told from the point of view of animals and is an absolute iconic classic that i really can't believe that i haven't read yet is Watership Down by Richard Adams. This has been made into a children's movie that is absolutely terrifying and um, yeah it's just supposed to be a really wonderful story and it is about a warren of rabbits who need to move fields due to some kind of foreboding danger that is coming and um, it's supposed to be really emotional and really beautiful so I am very excited to read this. As anybody who's been on my channel for a while knows I adore rabbits. I have a beautiful house bunny that is currently sleeping in the other room at the moment and is being very well behaved and not trying to eat any anything um so yeah i think this is gonna be really good and then i also have english animals by laura Kay. this is about it's kind of a mixture of a family drama um and it's about a woman who goes to live with a couple um mainly to be their apprentice to learn how to do taxidermy um but she ends up get, being embroiled in this very elaborate love triangle with them um it was quite popular on booktube either last year or the year before and it's been on my shelf for a really long time and i keep forgetting to pick it up and sort of bypassing it for other things but I love taxidermy I think it's fascinating um so I am really excited to see some of the more like technical stuff that's going to talk about in here as well as the sort of more family drama love triangle aspect and then the final book is actually for the buzzwordathon prompt for the, this month uh, or the month of May which is house or home and for that I have the housekeeper and the professor by I think it's Yoko Ogawa, Ogawa. um why don't they put the the first names on any of these Yes, Yoko Ogawa. Oh, I'm very proud of myself for remembering. This is a fairly short story and it's about a professor who, due to some kind of trauma, ends up, his memory gets shortened down to only like 80 minutes or so, but he's a professor who specialises in maths and it's about him creating riddles, um, mathematical riddles for his housekeeper as a way of like explaining his life, I think, um, because he has such this short memory, it's kind of his way of his brain coping with that. I really like reading about maths. I read some good books about maths earlier on in the year and I think this can be really interesting and this is part of the penguin um japanese paperback classic collection um so i definitely want to try and read it i've been wanting to read more translated fiction so i think this will be a fun good one for buzzwordathon and it's also quite short so i'm more likely to get to it with everything else that's going on on my tbr so there we have it those are the eight books i intend to try and get to for springathon and then the four fiction that are going to drift over as well um so have you picked your springathon tbr are you going to be reading any of these as well are you joining in with the group book what is your reading looking like for me in general um I yeah, I hope that you had a good time here and have a wonderful reading week and I will chat to you soon. Bye.